Hi Fertility Mamas! In this video I'm going to discuss tips for getting pregnant at 40 naturally. A woman is trying to conceive at 40 plus and faces challenges it's blamed on her age. Age is blamed and little to no investigation is done. We sometimes get a vague unhelpful diagnosis like old eggs. Many of our older for fertility clients were told that their only option was donor eggs. However, after working with us, they were able to conceive naturally. If you were diagnosed with poor egg quality, find it difficult to conceive or hold on to a pregnancy, keep watching. Charlene Lincoln, women's health and fertility expert. And first time mama at 42 using all natural solutions I love sharing with you. Consider subscribing to my channel for tips on optimizing your fertility naturally. And ring the bell to be notified of my next video. Are you considering going to a fertility clinic or already have been? Let's be clear, a fertility clinic is really just an IVF clinic. When you seek help at a fertility clinic, you are getting assessed whether or not you're a good candidate for IVF. Natural fertility, on the other hand, looks at the health of the whole body. Don't get me wrong, IVF is a necessary procedure for those couples that have anatomical abnormalities or the male partner is missing vas deferens. When you are assessed for IVF, one of the tests performed is an AMH test. An AMH test gives some insight into the remaining quantity of eggs and number of fertile years you may have, but it cannot determine the quality of those eggs. This is a really important distinction. An AMH test will also help an IVF clinic determine the level of stimulation drugs you will need in an IVF cycle. If your AMH is too low, an IVF clinic will most likely tell you you're not a good candidate for IVF and that donor eggs are your only option. Truth is, AMH is naturally lower in older women, and women with low AMH can and do conceive naturally. We get asked this question all the time. Is there anything you can do to increase AMH? I know there are many articles discussing DHEA, vitamin D3, and herbs to increase AMH. Though we see slight increases in AMH, focusing on improving egg quality is what's really important. Remember, you need only one or two eggs to get pregnant. And you want the quality of those eggs to be very, very healthy. Let's discuss what you can do to improve egg quality. This must be worked on for a minimum of 120 days before trying to conceive. This is called the preconception phase, where the egg cell goes through a maturation cycle and becomes the egg you ovulate. This, my friend, is where the rubber meets the road. In fact, studies have shown that, that the preconception phase is even more important than when the baby is in utero. Also, your partner's sperm health is equally important. A new batch is created every 76 to 90 days, which gives your partner time to make lifestyle adjustments to get his sperm in tip-top shape. Our fertility coaches are seeing clients from all around the world and when asked what is the main issue causing infertility today, they unanimously agree, poor mitochondrial function. Mitochondria are the engines of your cells. One of the main roles of mitochondria is the production of ATP, which is the main source of energy for all of our cells. It also controls intercellular pH, which improves fertilization of the egg. 
mitochondria are the only source of energy for the egg and as women age their mitochondrial function diminishes and can greatly affect egg quality it is thought of as the number one factor causing poor egg quality but what is the underlying cause of poor mitochondrial function and what can be done to improve it here are some of the key factors causing poor mitochondrial function and what we can do about them. Number one, toxins in our food and environment. The world we live in is full of toxins and those are affecting our reproductive health. Just to give you an idea, tests show women are absorbing up to five pounds of chemicals through our skin from cosmetic products every year. In a 2005 landmark study, EWG found an average of 200 industrial chemicals and pollutants in the umbilical cord blood of infants born in the U.S. More than 84,000 chemicals are put into Americans' food and products each year, essentially without safety testing, generating more than $763 billion in profits for the chemical industry. Strong scientific evidence exists that exposure to these chemicals is contributing to cancer, reproductive abnormalities, early puberty, and a host of other endocrine, neurological, and metabolic problems. While we can't completely avoid this chemical soup, there's quite a bit we can do to minimize exposure. Eat a diet focused on locally grown, fresh, and ideally organic whole foods. Processed and packaged foods are a common source of chemicals such as BPA and phthalates. Wash fresh produce well, especially if it's not organically grown. Choose grass pastured, sustainably raised meats and dairy to reduce your exposure to hormones pesticides, and fertilizers. Avoid conventional or farm-raised fish, which are often heavily contaminated with PCBs and mercury. Supplement with a high-quality krill oil or eat fish that is wild-caught and lab-tested for purity, such as wild-caught Alaskan salmon. Buy products that come in glass bottles rather than plastic or cans as chemicals can leach out plastics and plastic can linings into the contents. Be aware that even BPA-free plastics typically leach other endocrine disrupting chemicals that are just as bad for you as BPA. Store your food and beverages in glass rather than plastic and avoid using plastic wrap. I like storing my family's food in glass mason jars. Replace your non-stick pots and pans with ceramic or glass cookware. Filter your tap water for both drinking and bathing to remove the endocrine disrupting herbicide atrazine. Make sure your filter is certified to remove it. Look for products made by companies that are earth-friendly, animal-friendly, sustainable, certified organic, and GMO-free. This applies to everything from food and personal care products to building materials, carpeting, paint, baby items, furniture, mattresses, and others. Use a vacuum cleaner with a HEPA filter to remove contaminated house dust. This is one of the major routes of exposure to flame retardant chemicals. When buying new products such as furniture, mattresses, or carpet padding, consider buying flame retardant free varieties containing naturally less flammable materials such as leather, wool, cotton, silk, and Kevlar. Avoid stain and water resistant clothing, furniture, and carpets to avoid perfluorinated chemicals. Use natural cleaning products or make your own. Avoid those containing 2-butoxyethanol and methoxydiglycol, two toxic glycol ethers that can compromise your fertility and cause fetal harm. 
switch over to organic toiletries, including shampoo, toothpaste, antiperspirants, and cosmetics. EWG's Skin Deep database can help you find personal care products that are free of phthalates and other potentially dangerous chemicals. Replace feminine hygiene products with organic ones. Look for fragrance-free products. One artificial fragrance can contain, can contain hundreds, even thousands of potentially toxic chemicals. Avoid fabric softeners and dryer sheets, which contain a mishmash of synthetic chemicals and fragrances. Number two, get tested for MTHFR. If you have or had, had elevated homocysteine, recurrent pregnancy loss, infertility, preeclampsia, a child with Down syndrome, autism, postpartum depression, chronic depression, or a family history of any of those. MTHFR is a very common genetic defect that affects pro approximately one in four people seriously and nearly one in two people mildly. The MTHFR gene has a simple but highly critical function surrounding how your body utilizes folic acid and other forms of folate. Those with the variant of MTHFR called C667T have a 40 to 60% decreased ability to produce the body's most active form of folate called methylfolate. Methylfolate is a critical nutrient affecting neurotransmitter production, DNA regulation, immunity, and the cardiovascular system. Indirectly, methylfolate affects hormone levels and detoxification. Many who have had difficulty conceiving or holding on to a pregnancy have tested positive for this genetic defect. Ask your doctor for an MTHFR test or go through 23andMe.com and run your raw data through stratgene.com. Number three, incorporate mind-body techniques to keep your mind calm and help it detoxify from stressors which result in hormonal imbalance. I love kundalini breathwork and tapping technique for this. YouTube has some wonderful videos to teach you these techniques. Number four, test for nutrient deficiencies through a functional medicine practitioner that specializes in fertility. Make sure your vitamin D3 levels are optimized before trying to conceive. Number four, test for heavy metal toxicity. Elevated heavy metals have been found in our clients that have difficulty conceiving and habitually miscarry. Number five, take a whole base prenatal with folinic acid versus folic acid in case you are the 40% with MTHFR. Number six, get a complete thyroid panel, which includes thyroid antibodies. Elevated thyroid antibodies precede thyroid disease. Also, a TSH between 1 to 2 is optimal for fertility. Number 5. Have your partner get a sperm DNA fragmentation test. This test will determine the DNA health of the sperm. What lifestyle changes do you need to make to prepare your body for conception? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you benefited from this video, please like and subscribe. Download our report on restoring your fertility at restoreyourfertility.info. This 34-page report has helped couples from around the world overcome fertility issues naturally. Restoreyourfertility.info.